2024-25 academic year. Cannot believe that's the year we are in. Um, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping, just to get us started for the year. We will be recording this so that we can post it later. Uh, if you have any questions while we're moving through, you can put those in the chat. We will try to answer those as we move along. Um, but we will also try to have some time at the end that you can unmute and ask any questions that you have. Um, and other than that, if you uh, will go ahead and get started and I will hand it over to Dr. Dotson. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to get us started with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that Yuba College sits on the unceded land of the nation on people. We recognize their ongoing connection to this region and commit to amplifying their voice to pursue for federal recognition. We offer our respect to their elders and to all nation on people of the past, present, and future. All right, so uh, first update, I just wanna say what an incredible start we have had to this academic year. Uh, not only are we seeing significant enrollment recovery uh, while protecting the things that are incredibly important to us as an institution, but things have gone very smoothly. Um, I should probably just knock on wood <laughs> there, uh, but things have gone very smoothly from the welcome tables to the work that everyone did to put our very best foot forward for our students. I am incredibly thankful for everything that you do. Our students certainly deserve to come to an environment where people are excited to support them in their success and in their journey. And I'm grateful to so many of you who are making that happen every day. So thank you. Uh, as I shared at Convocation, we are continuing to move forward our educational master plan. Uh, we've seen some initial signs of really incredible success meeting the commitments that we made. We've also started some sense making around what the next uh, educational master plan looks like. So through our governance groups, we're having discussions about what that planning process that might look like. That one? like the emergency uh, just one minute, me, there we go. Um, what that planning process might look like um, and what it might focus on, et cetera. I wanna just be clear, we still are working on our current EMP, uh, making progress on the items that we already have and trying to identify the things uh, that we need to make sure are moving forward. Uh, but uh, in anticipation of the 2025-2026 year, we're starting to have some of those conversations. I also want to share uh, that I have uh, met with the College Council and will be coming to Senate here shortly to talk about our learning spaces remodel prioritization. Uh, as an institution in 2021, and then again two years later, we provided a prioritization of the projects that we wanted to have happen as an institution in our learning spaces. Uh, you may remember that this includes building 200 and 1,000, the relocation of the softball field, a remodel of building 100B, and a, re a partial remodel of building 300. Um, unfortunately, the projects that we have outlined have exceeded the funding that is available, uh, and we are uh, having to put on pause for now the Building 300 remodel. And in our governance groups, I've talked in more detail about what that looks like, but Building 300, like some of the other buildings on campus, is certainly one of the older buildings um, and has some significant challenges. One significant challenge is that in order for the second floor to be usable, there has to be an ADA accessible pathway to the second floor. And in addition to that, that building's uh, fire suppression system, uh, in order to do any work on that facility has to be replaced. That fire suppression system alone, an initial quote is over $600,000 for that work. Uh, so building 300 right now is on pause. It's not stopped. Uh, it's on pause until we can identify what funding is available and what that look, might look like moving forward. But certainly I would encourage you to speak to the individuals in your constituencies who are on the College Council or the Senate 
if you want to understand some of the details of um, that process and that decision moving forward. My last update is just a quick safety update. As you know, uh, every year we are trying to do unannounced drills, and we do have an earthquake drill scheduled for this fall and a fire drill scheduled for this spring. So if you have not recently taken a quick look at our response procedures for earthquake or fire, now is a great time to do that. We will be putting up posters like we have in the past and sending out general reminders about the expectations during those kinds of drills as we approach uh, getting closer to when those drills are actually going to happen. With that, I am going to transition over back to Dr. Brown. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna share a few quick updates. Uh, the ICER, Institutional Self-Evaluation Report for Accreditation, um, a draft of that will be going out soon. It should, it will be going to Academic Senate next week at their meeting uh, for an initial review. Um, there was a review last spring of a rough draft. Uh, a new review will be going to them next week. Uh, once it's out, uh, it will also go college-wide, um, and we will do a survey to allow people to give feedback at that point. Um, then it will go to college council for their first review, and, and we'll do an edit based on feedback we get and come back through for a final draft review before it goes to the board. Um, it is due to ACCJC in December, so we have between now and uh, really November to finalize the draft. Um, spring 2025 scheduling is finalizing, uh, getting assignments wrapped up and then being put, being sent into Christy Page for input. Uh, summer fall 2025 scheduling, I know, fun, uh, is starting soon. Um, the scheduling managers, deans and directors uh, will be reaching out before too long to the faculty to get that process started, to work with you on uh, kind of developing out that schedule. Um, and now uh, everyone should have seen my email from sometime in the summer about um, how we had taken some feedback uh, to look at the plans that I had shared last spring about the instructional area reorganization um, and had decided not to move forward with that over the summer. Uh, but had decided to bring forth a new uh, new draft of that, a new proposal, uh, to talk over the fall semester about that, um, and then look for a launch of the take two, as I'm calling it, um, in spring. So I'm going to share that with you now. So the next slide. Just as a reminder, th these are the um, programs, the specific programs that lead to a certificate or degree under each of the areas of interest. Uh, remember, we will be sharing the PowerPoint slides and this recording will be shared uh, as well. Um, these are also available, I think, um, if you look at our website, actually, our areas of interest are the academic program areas on our website now, so you can see which programs are under each. Um, but these are the programs. If we go now to the next slide, I've also made sure to include all of the disciplines. So some of our disciplines don't necessarily lead to a program a certificate or degree outcome, um, but we have disciplines. So I've listed all of them here under their uh, area of interest. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, I will show you the new proposed reorganization. So far left, um, we would have the arts, language, and communication uh, with, you know, provide names to pro give context, but Christina Venuti would be the dean in that area. Um, also, uh, Karen Stannis, director of Child Development Center, FKCE in AmeriCorps. Um, Tara Harlan is director of Academic Excellence Tutoring Services. Um, and then our library and learning resources and instructional design resources. And then Dr. Bagley um, would be applied technology, transportation, and culinary arts, business, and science and math. And then Dr. Dixon would be social science and education, 
and then with um, Carrie Mellert, our Director of Health and Medical Career Programs in Nursing, our new Director of Health Medical Career Programs in Nursing, uh, would be over that area. Um, and then our Director of Public Safety, Mark Covington, would be over Public Safety, both reporting to Dr. Dixon. The one caveat is um, Health Medical Career Programs in Nursing. That area actually encompasses kinesiology, health, and athletics, but uh, Eric, uh, Director Burns would report directly to me um, because there's also a dual report for Director of Athletics to the President. Um, and then also reporting directly to me would be Institutional Effectiveness Director uh, Mark Urban and the Director of Dual Enrollment, our new Director, Jen Castle. So this is the proposed reorganization. I included all of the areas Originally, I had just the academic disciplines last year, um, but I got some feedback also that uh, there was some questions about, well, does this mean tutoring's going somewhere else, or does this mean uh, libraries going somewhere else? So I wanted to make sure all of them were on here, um, so people were clear. Um, but this is the proposed reorganization. I will be sharing this broadly. The deans and directors will have it to share in their division and department meetings. Um, I look forward to getting any feedback anyone has, any questions I will be able to answer. Please reach out. We can set up time for a meeting to discuss. I will be taking it to Academic Senate soon. Um, so please feel free to reach out. With that, I will hand it over to uh, Dr. Harlan for tutoring. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Brown. So YC tutoring is off to a great start. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Okay, great. Um, Marysville hours, just want to remind you, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and setter hours are a little bit different, 8 to 6. We have launched very well. We've had over 429 requests, at least the, as of this morning, requests for services for tutoring. Um, we're in the middle of wrapping up our first raffle. I have some great pictures I'll share next time with you, um, where we are trying to promote the tutoring services. And part of that initiative is really getting people to come into the center and engage and talk to us and um, let them know what our services are when they're there. So this has gone very well. And we do have some winners of that. I wanted to remind everyone that there is online tutoring available. And the next slide, I just want to provide a little bit of data um, just so you can kind of take a look of how we are growing and improving. On the left is just an overall student count as far as how many visits. We have 11,144 visits, 14,375 hours. That was from 22-23. And then if you look in the next box um, on the left, you will see that 23-24 we did jumped from 11,000 to 14,000 visits, which was really great. And the hours also jumped significantly. Uh, we decided to include some information um, with the help of my team. Riley Hang has done a wonderful job with our data. And we decided to include information that would include unduplicated students. So you can see that there's a 37% overall just visiting the tutor, but those that are unduplicated, which means we are counting them once um, is about 35% overall increase from 2022-23 school year to 23-24. So that really just tells me that we're seeing um, an increase, of course, of students coming, but also a lot of those students are repeat users of our services. And there's about a 200 maybe difference of those that just pop in here and there. So I wanted to share that inf information with you. The next slide. Um, just promote some information out there. Um, I included the link to our tutoring services at the top. Um, you can find that on our web page for um, under resources and tutoring. These are some of the last three um, seminars that are going to be happening next week, which are really just workshops for students to take advantage of. Um, some of them will be in person. Some of them will be online. We've had, we have had, had, we have, had students show up and um, it, it's been a great resource, but we're also looking for other avenues to apply this um, to the classroom. So we are recording some of these and we will be sharing those links as well. So you can use them 
um, in your classrooms, which would be really awesome. And the next slide just really shows what we have been doing. Um, there's an app for that, helping students navigate their Canvas and just really navigate our website and how to find resources to support them. But we're excited in YC Tutoring. Please promote us in your classrooms, on your pages, in your Canvases. We really wanna see um, tutoring really increase this year. So thank you very much. And I will hand it over to Tanya. Hi everybody, welcome to fall semester. Um, I wanted to just take a few minutes with a couple of updates for everyone. So um, you would have seen my emails and hopefully you've attended some meetings or flex presentations in which um, Dr. Zong has been introduced. Um, Dr. Zong and a few other team members um, are en route to a conference. And so I'm not sure um, if he's joined us, but as a reminder, if you need to reach out to a counseling administrator, that's Dr. Zong, and who is now our Dean of Student Development. Also a reminder from the, some reminders from the student success team um, that we continue to have access to 24 seven 365 uh, mental and behavioral health care for our students via virtual services. That's via timely care and students can log in um, from their portal. Um, I'm also going to put a couple of links in the chat when I'm done talking um, links to the timely care uh, website where students can uh, click on to get connected. They'll log in with their YCCD ID and password and they are able to access either on demand talk now services or they can schedule, they can pre-schedule an appointment with a provider. And there are also some self-paced uh, journeys and uh, learning tools for students to focus on their mental and behavioral health. So please um, continue to refer students to those services. Um, I'm also pleased to let you know that we are uh, getting a new food service vendor up and running. They've been spending, uh, we've been spending some time thanks to MNO. Um, for getting the cafeteria space ready for our vendor. We had um, cleaning taken care of and we're going through the health and human services inspections that are required when you transition um, ownership or operation of a food service provider. So um, you will be receiving an email soon, um, but next week we intend to begin a phased in soft launch um, for some limited um, food services that will be available in the cafeteria. Our vendor, new vendor's name is Cup and Crust. And in the uh, upcoming uh, weeks, you will see new um, offerings added. You'll see seasonal menus and uh, promotions and opportunities. So please keep an eye on your email for that. We're very excited to welcome them to our campus. And then finally, we are in a general election year. And as part of our requirements um, for civic engagement on campus, because we need to, but more importantly, we want to get students involved in making decisions. Um, we will have some voter registration events coming up both at the Sutter Center, as well as Marysville campus to help students get connected if they're not already registered to vote. Um, and so uh, students have uh, been given the information about the required number of days that they may be registered to vote, how they can do that, where they can drop off ballots, et cetera. But please encourage students to uh, participate in these activities. And I will also include the link to our webpage on that in the chat in just a moment. And so with that said, I believe I am handing things over to um, someone from DSPS, but I'm not sure if it's Marcy. I think it's Carrie today because Marcy is also one of those individuals that's en route to a conference. Thank you, Dr. Teresh. Hi, everyone. Um, so today um, I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, we have many students with mobility disabilities that are trying to navigate uh, on campus in wheelchairs and scooters and are having difficulty getting into and out of classroom areas. Um, we've had a few students um, come in and talk to us about this issue. Because we don't have um, automatic door openers at some of the main entries, um, MNO has um, opened the doors and is going to open the doors in the morning and leave them open during the day to provide access for these students. So if you do see the doors open, please know they haven't been left open by mistake. Um, they, they have been purposely um, propped open. Um, also, and you're gonna notice that on two of the buildings, 
That's building uh, 1100 and building 800. And um, that was also an, an issue for 1000, but 1000 is under remodel. So we're not going to worry about that one right now. Um, one more thing, um, we would like um, to ask our faculty to make an announcement in their classes and um, encourage students to contact our department, contact DSBS to set up their accommodations for the new semester. So that's all I have, but thank you everybody. Have a great semester. Hello everybody. This oh, is sorry. sorry, Karen. Oh, I'm, okay. it off to Karen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Karen Sanders. I'm the director of the child development program. So I just wanted to share a little bit of information about our program and where we're at this year. So in case you are not aware, we are a free or reduced fee program. So Right now, currently 100% of our families are receiving um, free services, half day or full day services. Um, so we're available, um, I'll go through hours in just a minute, but we have free meals for children. We serve them two to five years old and actually in our toddler room down to 18 months. And this is for students, staff and the community So um, and faculty. So if you know of anybody who is in need of services during the week when school is in session or if they are working and going to school, because we have quite a few families in that situation, please feel free to contact our um, program office. We're available 7.30 to 5.30 uh, p.m. Monday through Friday. We're in the 1600 building and you can go to unit E. And next slide. So in our program, students receive priority. So if you do have students who are struggling with meeting um, someone for their child who is between 18 months and five years old, uh, please let them know about our program. It's so important. They also get study time for every hour of class time that they have, whether online or face-to-face -face courses, they receive two hours of study time. So that's super helpful. We also have parent education that we provide for, for families. Um, if you are a parent, you know it's not an easy task to take on, especially if you're trying to juggle school, work, and family, the whole thing. We also provide employment for students. So if you know of a student um, who is looking for work, please send them our way. Um, obviously, we prefer them to have some ECE units, but if not, um, we definitely can help them on that, um, that pathway. Um, we also provide ECE students um, a, a site for their practicum and their observations, which I'm so excited that now our ECE partners are right next to us, so it's a perfect situation for them. And we also provide um, nursing students their pediatric rotation, so they've already started back in August, and um, they're a, a huge asset to the program, and the, the children love having them there. So the next slide is just really a quick overview about what we provide. A lot of times people are confused about what does the child development program actually do out there? Do they watch kids? Well, yes, technically we are watching the children, but we also provide developmental assessments. So again, making them kindergarten ready. We provide curriculum that is based on state regulations. So we follow a foundation and framework, um, a curriculum pathway. We have, uh, we provide the social and emotional skills. So going into kindergarten um, is a little different now than it used to be. And so we may want to make sure that they're socially and emotionally ready so that they can learn those other skills. They get a sense of belonging and a sense of community. And our uh, motto, I guess, for our program as, uh, is about beginning to love learning. And so really it's about um, when the kids are on this uh, campus and on our other campuses at Woodland and Lake, they really get a kick out of the fact that my parents are going to college and then they start talking about college as young as our little three-year-olds. So I think that's a great asset. And then again, we provide family engagement. I wanted to just say a quick plug that we are also hiring. So uh, I mentioned students, but we also have some permanent positions available um, through all through three of our um, campuses. So if you have nobody who is looking for a full or part-time position, please have them look on people admin and submit their application. So thank you very much. And with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Elena Flax. Hello, everybody. I would like to remind our faculty that we have um, funding opportunities. If you're interested in converting your course to OER, if you're currently using a publisher textbook, but you'd like to use open educational resources, there are some stipends available. So once you get the 
PowerPoint, you can click on the form. Uh, you can email me also with any questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's surviving the heat. Um, I'm here to tell you about Academic Senate. Uh, Academic Senate meets every Thursday at noon in the President's Boardroom, Conference Room, Room 4. There's also a Zoom cast at the Center Center in Room 106, and you can connect from your office, home, or wherever you wish on Zoom. Um, every Monday, our President Melissa Hobb posts and emails the minutes and agenda for each meeting. So if you look at your email each Monday, you'll see all the connections there for Zoom, and um, you'll see what is going to be discussed. Last week, we had a visit from the chancellor. This week, um, we're reviewing harassment issues in the uh, in the in um, for a BP and AP. Every week, it changes, and Melissa lists those things in the agenda. If there's something that is not being presented that you feel that maybe Academic Senate needs to have a look at, um, each meeting opens with a public comment. So you're free to come in person or on Zoom and share your thoughts. Or I know everyone is busy. You could email one of your senators who are listed here on this page. Um, and I know you're not going to probably remember everyone on this page. But if you refer back to the email that goes out each Monday, um, all the representatives are listed there. So you can find your area representative. And there's a few at-large representatives. Uh, Mukta Sharma and I are both at-large, so we can help with faculty across different disciplines. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, this is the 10 plus one. This basically lists the issues that Academic Senate looks at. Um, most of their academic uh, faculty and professional issues. And there's always the 11th one, the plus one, which covers everything that's not in the list above. So if there's an issue that you would like to share that you feel needs to be discussed or addressed, um, please let us know. And if it doesn't fit nicely in that one to 10, it's probably a plus one and we'd love to hear from you. We'd also like to extend an invitation to new faculty and part-time faculty and anyone that has not attended a Senate meeting. It, it is interesting. Um, it's, it, you know, the door, well, the door is closed, but you can open it. And we have nice, lovely seats for you to sit at and you can say something, you can get involved in the discussion or you can sit and watch. But I think it's a worthwhile thing to do for our faculty to come and visit and see how the consultative sheriff governance process happens. Um, I'm going to hand it now to Eric Burns. Unmute. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year, team. Team Yuba. Um, <clears throat> athletics update. We're just getting underway with fall sports. Uh, football has its first game on the road uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, men's and women's soccer has started to play. Um, they played last week and uh, men played uh, yesterday. Um, and volleyball has a home match this Friday. Schedules are available on the website. They're also on an Outlook calendar that can be shared with you if you're interested. Just contact the athletic department. We'll share that calendar out with you. Uh, and then we also have uh, schedules in the athletic office. This year, we're making available employees for free to, to attend our athletic events with your new employee ID tag. So um, make your appointment to get your ID tag, and that'll get you to all of our athletic events, not including the playoffs. This would not include the playoffs, but we certainly want to see you uh, out at our athletic events and uh, supporting our teams. Uh, makes for a great energy. Uh, it's also great for the campus. So look forward to seeing you out there. Uh, we're excited to um, include new head coaches uh, for football. It's Tim Mulvihill, who comes to us uh, from the Division One and Division Two levels at uh, University of Texas San Antonio. Uh, also grew up and is a native of the um, Loomis area, went to uh, Del Oro High School. Joining us uh, just at the very end of the summer, we just added him to our staff, Dave Rodriguez. A uh, longtime community person, baseball person, uh, was the Yuba City High School head coach uh, for many years, and then also um, at Marysville. And so we're excited. To, he, he's also an alumnus of Yuba College and played here under Coach Engelkin. And he, well, I won't say when it is. <laughs> I don't want to date him. Uh, but uh, he is a, a 49er, an original 49er. So we're excited to have him back on campus. 
Uh, and then track and field added Hannah Smirt uh, as a co-head coach. Uh, she is also returning. She's an alumnus. Uh, and she joins the staff to help Howdy take the helm of the track and field program. Uh, so we're very excited for those coaches to uh, be on board and to uh, bring along our student athletes. Next slide, please. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to remind the faculty, uh, the AP 4300 the field trip and excursion handbook allows for authorized student absences for approved activities. Um, this authorization, this allowance uh, does have a caveat that student athletes should be making contact with the faculty before that trip happens. And ideally within enough time, uh, to uh, make arrangements or, or uh, agree on some arrangements that make sense for both the student and the, and the faculty person uh, to, uh, for that student athlete. And I can also assure you that the student athletes are warned uh, that um, the two or three times that this might happen in the season or a semester does not protect them from 11 absences. There's not much I could do for them if they're missing that much and, and, and understand faculty's got to do what they got to do. Uh, but there is a notification process. There is a form that will be signed by the coach, um, sort of authenticating that that trip is going on. And if you, if you have access to the um, Outlook calendar, then you can also verify the events exist on the calendar. Uh, there is a, sort of a separate issue to that, mostly related to the spring, and that is, is that sometimes planned events change due to weather, particularly in baseball and softball, uh, but I'll, I'll get into that later this year. Uh, you can contact myself um, if you have questions or or have concerns in specific situations. I can either refer you to a coach uh, that we can maybe um, have some intervention if you have an issue with a student. Uh, but if you have a concern about the policy or the way the policy is being handled, by all means, please get a hold of me and uh, we'll, we'll work it out. Just know that um, the the academic aspect of whatever sort of conflict we might have that can't be sort of um, negotiated th through this process and through what the handbook says, um, academics will be uh, the priority and that's my priority. So um, next slide. Uh, with the new seasons, um, just some ways you can support uh, the athletic programs. We have uh, an apparel and merchandise uh, website, a sideline store, if you will. Uh, you get Niner gear and merchandise. Um, we also, well, you don't need the tickets and passes this year. We'll we'll get you our faculty and staffing for free with the uh, ID pass. And then uh, there's just another way to support some of our athletic programs or the athletic program as a whole with that other QR code. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, next slide. Um so I included this right here. That That's the extent of the athletics update. And then for alumni and friends, we're, we're ramping up, getting active. Um, there is a link at the top of the Yuba College homepage. I've circled it right there as a, a with a screenshot. Uh, that'll take you right to the, uh, the alumni and friends page. Uh, and there you can either become a member. Uh, you can apply for alumni and friends small grants program. Uh, but then also, if you wanted to get involved with the committee and some of the activities that we um, and try and engage in, uh, you can contact me or Zulema in the president's office uh, for more information on when we're meeting and, and what's involved with all of that. Uh, we definitely um, want to grow the Alumni and Friends program for um, to support clubs and other um, academic programs and other um, curricular extracurricular needs. Uh, and then we also want to re-engage our many, many alumni, 90 years of alumni, we, and, and even friends in the community uh, with the college through communications and just the different activities that we have, whether it's promoting athletic events or promoting theater events and, and stuff like that. So I uh, hope you can reach out uh, to myself or Zulema for questions uh, about any of those things, becoming a member, a small grant program, or just being involved with the committee. And that is the extent of my update. Hope you all have a great academic year. And I will turn it over to the district updates. Yeah, I, I took a quick look. I don't see anyone, but if we have any of our district partners that are here today that want to give an update to the group, please feel free to unmute.
Okay, and I, I didn't see them either, but uh, the bookstore, is anyone here from the bookstore to provide any updates? All right, well, then that brings us to the end of our formal agenda, and uh, we can answer any questions you might have, if anyone has any for the group. All right. Well, then it was great to see you. We will stay on for a few minutes if you do have questions and just didn't want to ask them publicly. Uh, 